Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. The scripture says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. The word of God for the people of God. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today, blessing your holy name because you are good. Father, we just want to tell you thank you for keeping us another week. Thank you, Father God, for protecting us and for providing everything we have needed. God, we just glorify your name for your goodness and mercy. And we thank you, Father, because we know we didn't deserve it, Father, but because you are a just God. God, you extended grace unto us, and for that, we want to say thank you. We thank you for waking us up this morning, God, and clothing us in our right mind. And we thank you that we have the activity and use of our limbs. And God, that we're able to open up our mouths and praise your holy name, God, just because you deserve it. Father, we just want to tell you thank you for allowing us to come to your house today, God. We know that the enemy did not want us to come, God. And because you allowed us to come here, God, we are pushing past everything we have experienced, everything we are currently experiencing, God. And we are determined to lift up the name of Jesus. God, we ask you right now that you would have your way in this place. We thank you right now that even before the beginning of time, you knew this. Day what's coming, God. And God, we thank you that you had it on our on your mind to let us be here, God. And because you love us so much, God, we're just gonna show you how much we love you, man, God. We're gonna do it by clapping our hands and we're gonna do it by opening up our mouths, God, and releasing a hallelujah in the atmosphere. So Holy Spirit, come and rest in this place and come and rest in the homes of those who are viewing the live stream away.
special request. That if the Lord don't do it, it can't be done. Don't fool me now. How many got a special request? Been through the fire, been through the rain. But if the Lord don't do it,
loved him so much that he just tossed him in the air and called him. It was breathtaking for the little boy. But the little boy, after he got over his exhilaration, went back to the father and said, Daddy, do it again. How many want father to do it again? Lord, you've done it once before. I believe you can do it again. I'm not looking for something special. I, I decided you need to do what you've already done before. Do it again, Lord. Just do it again. Truly, we give honor to the Lord, to the name that is above every name. And that is the name of Jesus the Christ today. We give glory to him today. I don't know about you, but I believe he's worthy to be praised. And we come to lift up the name of Jesus today. I don't know about you, but I don't know nobody like Jesus. I don't know nobody like him. Nobody can do me like he can do me. Oh, hallelujah today. We do thank God for all the things that he's already done. For how he's working things out for our good. Truly, we do thank God for your presence with us today. As we come to the scripture, it's already been read by Reverend Marcus. I don't know about you, but I believe mean, it's a high time to give God some prayer. I believe mean, we ought to stop what we're doing. Stop going through the program. Because somebody got an abundant blessing. Huh? Somebody take care of themselves. You got a case of the take care of it. And you got to let somebody know that God has smiled on me. Hallelujah. It's a good time to give God glory. It's a good time to give God the glory. Today as we come, don't you wait on nobody to give God glory. Don't you wait for your favorite song. You ought to look back in your past and realize how good God has been. You ought to look down the aisle or look down your queue or look down somewhere and let God know God you've been good to me. Anybody know what I'm talking about? 
Wisdom is valuable in our lives and, and, and we must take advantage of all the wisdom, yes. godly wisdom that he presents unto us. Yes. That will help us in the experiences of life, not to faint, not to give up, not to turn and go the other way, but to learn that God has a way of teaching me. Yes. The old folk would say, God has a way that is mighty sweet. Yes. Just lay your burdens at his feet. He knows the road. He will have the Lord God has way that he is mighty sweet. God's ability to lead us in the growth process shows his willingness to not only be patient with us, mm -hmm. but his willingness to use us to perfect his will. Yeah. As we grow in the Lord, we understand that it's not that he's mad at us, that he doesn't want us to succeed, but he wants us to grow in him. And when we have come, become familiar with the grace of God, we have to learn that in grace there's patience. Uh -huh. How many got some patience today that you normally would not have had? Uh -huh. But God had to let you go through a storm to get you to this point. Yeah. That you'll learn not to get upset. Don't jump overboard. When everything is going wrong, don't, don't just get upset and throw in the top. I've learned that in anything, when, when the going gets rough, and things start happening all around. God is up to something good. He's up to doing something good in my life. I can't get frustrated with the things of life. I got to let God have his way. And his way is to mature me and to know who he is. And what he is capable of doing. The apostle Paul wrote into the church at Philippi to ease their conscience. In who's doing the work. When he wrote in Philippi. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this very thing, that he which begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In essence, what the Apostle Paul is saying, that God, he started something in you, he's going to finish his work. Oh, all you have to do is just be patient. Don't, don't get ahead of God. Don't, don't, don't rush out in front of him. Don't, don't get to a point where you get tired of, of, of taking a back seat sometimes. God will exalt you in due time. I'm here today to talk to somebody who hasn't lived in any, in any length of time. I'm here today to tell you, young people, don't you get ahead of God in this microwave age. Let God have his way. Don't produce something. That will cost you in, in the end. You can get ahead of God and produce something that your flesh will make you regret. That you wish you took part in. But you got to let God have his way. I'm here today to tell you some folk that, that, that are real fast. I know, that, that, that's an old term. That's an old term. They used to say, that, 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 honey, you, 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 you're too fast. You're being too quick. It's not that you are physically fast. It's that you are doing something ahead of your own time. Be quick to understand that God is working his word. But he's not going to do it in your microwave age. He's not going to do it quick fast and in a hurry. It didn't take you. It didn't, you didn't want more than six feet tall. Mm, you were born a foot tall. Weighing about seven pounds. But all the time, you grew into who you are. And that's why it takes time spiritually the same way it does in the natural, the same way it does in the spirit. you got to let God have his perfect way. But grow in the grace of God. Whatever God started in you, he is able to finish. But I found out a long time ago, Sister Speech, you got to make yourself available. You gotta put yourself on the allow the Lord to put you on the potter's wheel of life. And it doesn't, doesn't feel good on the potter's wheel, but I learned that it's good for me because he's working it out for my good. Every now and then when trouble arrives, you gotta know God is at work in your life. That's why the prophet Jeremiah came to this fruition in his own time. When God would send him to his own people and with a message of transformation. The children of Israel and especially the children of Judah had become sin 
lady. They had got too big for their own self. And they had to be taken down a peg. I wish I had somebody that could wave your hand at me and say, I know what he's talking about. Because every now and then, if you get too big for yourself, God is able to humble you. But you can't wait for the hand of God to humble you. You ought to humble your own self. The Bible said that even when we look at Jeremiah, and I'm so glad that Jeremiah and Ezekiel were two major prophets in this time that God utilized to bring a message to the people. And I like thinking Higgins how God related to them. He just didn't tell them the message. He just didn't preach to them the message, but he showed them the message. They had to become pawns of God's message. And every now and then, even with Jeremiah, Jeremiah got back to the point where he got frustrated because he was used as the go-through man. Uh -huh. And even he got frustrated with saying, Lord, they treat me bad on this side. He said, I, I would shut my mouth. And I would give up. I would turn in my, re my resume and say, I'm not going to fool with this no more. I would tell somebody, I don't quit this thing, but I can't quit now because God, you brought me too far to leave me. I wish I had somebody in here that has experienced life maybe one or two days just to look down the aisle and tell somebody I've experienced life. And when I would did want to quit, when I did want to go in the top, when I did say, hey, you know, enough, when I did say, I ain't going to take this no more, when I did think about doing something bad, even though I didn't say it, I did feel like it. I felt like saying some stuff, but I found out if I kept my peace, if I shut my mouth and let the Lord have his way in my life, that he would be glorified by my silence. That's why as they experienced the state of rebellion, uh -huh. they fell in love with sin. Uh -oh. And God would not allow them to go any further as his people. Uh -huh. But he allowed them to go into captivity. Uh -huh. And even in that, God is still able, if he allows the enemy yeah. to run roughshod over him, he's still able to keep his hand on him. Yeah. How many know I've been through some stuff? And God allowed the enemy to run roughshod over me. But I'm so glad that he kept his hand on me. I believe, said, I believe, brother, that every now and then, I got to make sure that the hand of God is upon me. I may have to go in the enemy's camp sometime. I may have to go through something. I may have to go on a day to see it. I may have to go through something. But I got to know that the hand of God is still with me. That's why in the sermon, God wasn't just content to bring Jeremiah to the conclusive understanding mm -hmm. that he is still at work. Yeah. The Bible said the word of the Lord uh -huh. came unto Jeremiah mm -hmm. from the Lord saying, get up, arise, and go down to the potter's house. Mm -hmm. uh, many of you would say that not only did he say, I want you to see the work, but I want you to hear the sermon. Hear the words that I'm talking to you. While the sermon is going forth, I want you to see the sermon on the wheel. Yeah. The Bible says that, that even in that, he said, I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrote a work on the wheel. Mm -hmm. That means the potter was busy. He was busy doing his trade. And I'm so glad that even when I'm asleep, God is still at work. He's still working things out for my good. That's why you ought to get up every day and say, God, what do you want me to do? Don't have your set agenda to say, Lord, I'm going to do this and do that. Oh, God said, wait a minute, you got to talk to me first because I'm the one who woke you up. I didn't get too many amens today, but every now and then you ought to start your day with, Lord, what do you want me to do? Don't have your own agenda because you can get so stuck in self and God said, I didn't tell you to do that. Who can God Almighty? Let me rush on. But we find God utilizing the elementary process of pictures is worth a thousand words. The word came to Jeremiah in a twofold message. It came, one was God still saw that means God had a sovereign plan. Well, and he wasn't going to let his children or the enemy 
disrupt this plan. Because God had a plan for them. And whenever God has a plan for you, if you get out of line, God will let the enemy come in and run the rough shot over you. But even if your enemy want to, God is still merciful to say when enough is enough. How many know that your enemy could have done some stuff to you? I believe Sister Green, when he wanted to do something with me, God said, huh, I ain't going to let that happen today. I, I'm so glad that I'm in the hand of a just God. How many can thank God for being sovereign over your situation? How many know sometimes the enemy wanted to do some stuff? Sister Vanessa, he wanted to mess up your finances. But even in him messing up your finances, God turned that thing around and blessed your finances so you were better than you were when you first went into it. I wish I had a witness in here that can say God worked it out for me. He worked it out for me. He, he, he specializes in things that are impossible for me. But I'm so glad that he's still son. That means he's immutable. That means he never changes. I'm so glad he's omnipresent. That wherever I am, that wherever I go to, he's already there. That means he's omnipotent. That means he's got all power in his hand. I wish I had somebody that would go down the theological road with me and help me to understand that, that God is still with you. And I'm so glad even when you feel like nobody else is walking with you. When your friends walk out on you. When everybody else turns a deaf ear to you. I have a God who cares about me enough to work things out for my good. That's why when you look at this, this love affair mm, that the potter had with the clay was that the potter was in the business of shaping and molding. We find in this that, that Jeremiah had to observe the potter in his work. And it wasn't to a point where the clay could talk back to the potter. Let me put a pin right there and stop this a little bit. Somebody's trying to tell God what to do and how to do it. But let me help you out right here. He's not going to listen to you. He's already got a set plan that he wants you to do. It's not up to you to talk back to the, to the potter and let the potter know, Lord, you're shaping me in the wrong way. You're doing the wrong thing to me. How many can understand, even though he takes me through something, even though he gets to a point where it feels like he's even slaying me or he's bringing me down, how many know it's for my good? But I got to get to understand, I can't talk back to the potter. Because the potter knows my condition. He knows what he wants to make out of me. He knows what he wants to bring out of my life. And I've got to learn to be pliable. You say, well, that's a big word, preacher. What does that word pliable mean? That means I've got to learn to bend. I've got to learn to change. Whenever God mandates a change in my life, I can't be so disgruntled and ask God, why are you doing this? I've got to learn that whatever he does, it is for my good. That's why when you look at the, 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 the condition of the clay, the clay was pliable in the potter's hand. But I'm so glad that even in the process, that it became uh, damaged, it became marred in the hands of the potter. And even in that, brothers and sisters, don't understand. I believe somebody can say, well, why did the why did it more in the potter's hand? You ought to not get to look at that in such a disdain way because all of us have been messed up before. Yeah. I wish I'm talking to some folks that can be real up in this house. You ain't been saved all your life. You ain't been doing all right all your life. Somewhere you messed up. You tripped up. You snooped out. You've done something. Said something. Done something that you really were not pleased. But I'm so glad there's still hope for the mark. There's still a blessing in my mindness. And that's when I come to the understand that God, I don't care how bad I messed up. I thank you for being so merciful unto me that when man gave up on me, you didn't give up. But you learned, you took me in a different direction and allowed me to be made over again. And I'm so glad that God took the time to make the potter of the clay over 
again. That means he did not give up on me. He did not turn me over until the damage part. But it pleased the potter to make him over again. Another vessel. So I'm grateful today. I'm not a finished product by any chance. I'm not done. God's not through with me yet. And I'm not going to use that as an occasion to sin. Now some people use that as an occasion to say, Honey, he ain't done with me. I might say some stuff that I used to say. But you ought to turn your table around and realize that God was merciful to you when you was out there shaking a leg. He was merciful to you when you were tearing somebody off. He was merciful to you when you were giving somebody a piece of your mind, knowing that at any point you could have lost your mind. But how many can raise their hand today and say, Preacher, you're talking to me when I would do good. Evil is present with me. But I'm not using this as an occasion to sin. I've got to learn that whatever I've been through, I've got to use it for my best shot. The devil used his best shot. He could have took you out when you were doing your best. But how many know the hand of God was upon me and even in my mess? God still kept me even in my room. I know I'm talking to some sanctified folk up in here. But how many can look back over your life and say that was some times God should have took me out of here. But I'm so glad praise and mercy had their way in my life. So what you see is not a product of my goodness but I'm so glad he specializes in messed up stuff. How can you thank God that I was messed up from the floor up? But thanks be to God, he turned that thing around. How many know I haven't always been where I am today? But you ought to thank God that he bought me from a mighty, mighty, mighty. Some people have got this thing all wrong. They think the church is a full of perfect people. They think the church is full of perfect folk. But I'm so glad to look around the room today. And that's some of you looking at me today. You know if the Lord told your story, you'd have to tip out on this place. But I'm so glad what he knows about me he kept it to himself. And I'm so glad that he won't tell on me. Because if he told on me, I'd have to tip out. But I'm so glad he forgave me when I pledged that the blood be applied to my life. That's why I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. Because it saved me and cleared me from all unrighteousness. That's why when I think of it, I look at the cross and I remember I haven't always been where I am. But every now when I think this, I have to get a shout on because I realize how good God 
That's why. If you know something on me, you might bring it to me. But I can say it's under the blood. You might bring it to me. Huh? You might know me when. Huh? You might know my bad stuff. But that's all right. I can say it's under the blood. How many glad it's under the blood today? Huh? You can't bring it up against me. I'm so glad he cast my seat as far as the east is from the west. Never to bring them up again. But it's only by the blood. Today, I'm out of time. But I'm not out of words. God told me, Jeremiah, listen, Jeremiah. What I did on the party street, when I made it over again, could not have done this to the to the pleasant people, to the children of Israel, if they just make themselves accessible. Because I'm in control of this. I want somebody to go out of here knowing that the devil is not in control of your destiny. I wish I had somebody that, that just, just, just lose their mind. Right? The devil is not in control of my destiny. My plan is God's plan. Is that I prosper? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's God's way of doing things. Will my pockets be full of money all the time? No. No. But He'll prosper. Amen. <laughs> you see, I didn't understand that until I got to reading over there where Joseph was a prosperous man. That's all the trouble that Joseph got into. But in the end, God bought him second in command. Where you are now is not where you're going to be. Somebody ought to give God some glory. I'm so glad that God still specializes in working with the clay. Because that's all we are. Clay in the master's hands. Amen. I'm glad he didn't give up. I wish I had somebody in here. You see, if I was talking about finances and somebody getting the check, folk would be having turn a card me. But I got somebody in here that knows the path that God brought you through. Somebody is in here very familiar with that was a time when you wouldn't even knock at the door of the house of the Lord. But how many could just testify if since Jesus came me. What a change. He's made.
to make it right. And somebody got a question to say, how many times did God give you? He ain't just give me a second chance. He gave me a third chance. He gave me a fourth chance. And I quit counting after that. Because I understood his mercy and his grace is a necessity in my life. I'm so glad I'm not using this as a means of going back out and doing what I want to do. But I know I'm a work in progress. And I know when God gets through with me, I share with you. That's good. Today, if you've heard the word of the Lord, maybe you want to turn your life over to him. He said, if you, when you hear my voice, pardon not your heart. That may be someone that one desires a relationship with the Lord come to you now. If you desire a relationship with the Lord come to you now. That may be someone, someone that wants to come and join by letter or by the experience. You don't have a comfort. You can come now. I believe the deacons will be standing over here and the one over here is that one that desires to come. Make you one. Is there another? It's a good day to know who Jesus is. It's a good day. Maybe you know who he is. Maybe you want him to put you back on the Father's wheel and make you over again. He said today, if you hear my voice, heart not your heart. Today, is there another? Bow your head with Father, we thank you for this blessed opportunity that you have given us, Lord, today to come and sit at your table. For, Lord, it is your table, Father, Lord, that is filled with great things. Today, Father, we thank you for the soul, the Father, that you have brought this way. Thank you for speaking to the person, Lord, today that is able to come and submit their life. There may be someone for this viewing us by Facebook Live. Maybe there's someone that, that needs a, the Savior on their side. Lord, they may say, what must I do to be saved? But today you said, if, if they confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead, he said, thou shalt be saved. Today, Father, Lord, we pray that you do a work right now in the lives of these people. Strengthen us for this journey ahead. We'll be so careful to give your name to pray this morning. For it is in Christ Jesus' name we do pray. And they all said amen. Amen. amen.
to the Missionary Baptist Church. We pray that you were blessed by the word of God. And we pray that something has been said that draws you closer to the Lord. We invite you to tune in again on next Sunday at 11 a.m. where we will stream live. We also invite you to tune in to our YouTube page where you have the opportunity to not only view the live services again, but also to view, review our Sunday school as well as our Bible study. If someone has been led to sow into the ministry or you wish to sow your tithes or offering into the ministry, we have an app for that. It's called Givelify. That's www.givelify.com. Certainly, we thank God for you and what God is doing in your life. We thank God for the souls who have been saved today. Amen. The angels are rejoicing and so are we. Amen. And we say to God, be the glory for all things being done well. Will you pray one more time with me, Father, in the name of Jesus? We thank you and praise you for the visitation of your Holy Spirit. We thank you and praise you for everything that you have assigned to happen on today. We thank you for the healing that is taking place. We thank you for the deliverance that is taking place. We thank you for the souls that have been saved on today. God, we just bless your name, God, that somebody has turned their life to you. We thank you, God, that you release peace on today. We thank you, God, that you release joy on today. We thank you, God, that mercy is following us, God. And we pray right now, God, that you will continue with us, God, that you will continue to press God, that you will continue to protect us until we meet again. God, be with us. Guide us. Pour back into our pastor, God, as he has poured out your word into us, God. We glorify your name for all things being done well. And the people who love God and who can say my worship is for real, shout amen, amen, and amen. To God be the glory.